The American College of Medical Informatics is an honorary society established to recognize those who have made sustained contributions to the field. Since its founding in 1984, 170 fellows have been elected to the college. Its highest award for lifetime achievement and contributions to the discipline of medical informatics is the Morris F. Collin Award. Dr. Collins' own efforts as a pioneer in the field are an embodiment of creativity, intellectual rigor, perseverance, and personal integrity. And so it is that the college gives its highest recognition to those whose attainments have, throughout their careers, substantially advanced the art and science of medical informatics. The college is proud to announce that the 1997 recipient of the Morris F. Collin Award is Dr. Donald A. B. Lindbergh. Born of Swedish parents in 1933, Don Lindbergh grew up in Brooklyn, New York. An honors graduate of the Polytechnic Prep School in Brooklyn, he attended Amherst College where he majored in mathematics and graduated magna cum laude in 1954. He returned to New York to attend the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Columbia University and received his Doctor of Medicine degree in 1958. After an internship and residency in pathology at Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center, he joined the pathology department faculty at the University of Missouri School of Medicine in Columbia, Missouri in 1960. With the support of Dr. Vern Wilson, Dean of the School of Medicine, Young Dr. Lindbergh was soon engaged in the unprecedented activity of computerizing the clinical pathology laboratory services for the medical center. He developed applications to improve the speed, quality, and consistency of laboratory results reporting. He developed expert systems to assist in pathologic diagnosis and began publishing articles in the field that would become known as medical informatics. By the mid-1960s, he had garnered an international reputation as an expert in the use of computers in medicine. One of the systems which contributes to the pool of data available to medical students and staff is our system for collection, evaluation, and transmission of clinical laboratories data. All of the institution's clinical lab reports must flow through the computer. The limit system then considers a variety of parameters. Among these are the age, race, and sex of the patient, the normal range of results, the results of previous determinations, and also, in some cases, the uh, patient's diagnosis and therapy. Abnormal or dangerous results are sent back to the laboratory for evaluation by the pathologist or resident. Good ones are transmitted to the ward. Medical students and staff have access to all this data through computer programs and computer inquiry terminals. We are presently most excited by certain discoveries of new relationships between the results of multiple tests performed simultaneously on the same serum sample. Through the use of this technique, it is possible for the computer itself to discover new patterns and new syndromes in the information about patients. The establishment of the Federal Regional Medical Programs Initiative in the 1960s provided Dr. Lindbergh and the University of Missouri RMP coordinator, Dr. Arthur Rickley, the opportunity and the resources to develop a number of innovative computer applications. Among these were an automated patient history acquisition system that enabled patients to directly enter current symptoms into a computer terminal. The system employed graphics to reduce language barriers between patients and their physicians. The RMP Center in Columbia provided information services to regional affiliates via FactBank, an acronym for Fast Access to Current Text. Using electromechanical access to stored microfiche of page images searchable by medical subject headings, 
It represented the state of the art in electronic document storage and retrieval, providing access to any of thousands of microfilmed pages within 15 seconds. The Missouri RMP was also one of the first to operationalize the automated interpretation of electrocardiograms acquired via telemetry over phone lines. Dr. Lindbergh's application of expert systems algorithms led to the development of CONSIDER, an early differential diagnostic program, and later the use of the criteria table form of knowledge representation and reasoning upon which was built AI Room, a diagnostic expert system in rheumatology. AI Room is particularly notable for its capacity to educate its clinician users to make the proper observations via a rich variety of textual and image-based reference information. Dr. Lindbergh rose through the academic ranks during a 24-year career at the University of Missouri to become Professor of Pathology and Director of the Information Science Group. As his international reputation in the field of medical information systems grew, Dr. Lindbergh was appointed to review groups and advisory committees of the National Institutes of Health, including the Board of Scientific Counselors of the National Library of Medicine. Thus, in 1984, the NIH, in its nationwide search for a scholar and administrator, chose Dr. Lindbergh to be the director of the National Library of Medicine. I, Donald Lindbergh. I, Donald Lindbergh. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office on which I am about to enter. Of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Don. Thank you very much. When Don Lindbergh arrived at NLM, the institution had a 148-year history of steady service to health professionals. Medline was primarily a medical librarian's tool, available during regular business hours, Eastern Time, five days a week. The new director began his relentless pursuit of increased availability, ease of use, and broader constituencies for NLM's online information services. Within a few months, Medline was available seven days a week, essentially 24 hours a day. To make searching of NLM databases more user-friendly, he introduced Grateful Med, a forms-based searching program for microcomputers, which marked the beginning of an era of new products notable for technical innovation and whimsical names. He sought best guidance for the future directions of the library and convened more than 120 experts in libraries, medical informatics, and health professions education to create a 20-year long-range plan for the NLM as a world resource. From the dozens of recommendations of the long-range planning committees, several emerged as top priorities for the institution. The information system's support for modern molecular biology and the nascent Human Genome Project were recognized by Dr. Lindbergh as essential tools for the coming era of molecular medicine, and he led the library in creating a National Center for Biotechnology Information. NCBI is now home to GenBank, the National DNA Sequence Data Bank, and has developed a spectacularly successful set of search tools and algorithms in use worldwide. Recognizing the potential provided by modern computing and communications technologies for the representation of biological structure, Dr. Lindbergh endorsed the idea of a national reference data set of three-dimensional anatomic data, the Visible Human Project, which has become the focal point for development of interactive tools for education, research, and healthcare delivery. The project has captured the eye and imagination of the public media and presages an increasing number of services for the lay public as well as for health professionals. These visible advances in modern information systems are built upon an invisible but essential infrastructure, and infrastructure figures prominently in the Lindbergh-directed National Library of Medicine. There is infrastructure support for academic medical centers to weave their information resources into a seamless fabric via IAMES, the Integrated Advanced Information and Management Systems Grant Program. 
Dr. Lindbergh's personal vision for improving the infrastructure for representing medical meaning and coding is the goal of a decade-long investment in the Unified Medical Language System. The UMLS provides an electronic Rosetta Stone in the form of a metathesaurus linking a growing array of computerized naming and coding systems and a variety of tools to build systems that understand the common medical meanings behind hundreds of thousands of words, terms, and codes. In 1991, the White House selected Dr. Lindbergh to be the first director of the National High Performance Computing and Communications Program, a federal research and development initiative to build the next generation of computing devices, high-speed digital networks to connect them, new software technologies, and education and training in their use. Under Lindbergh's direction, the program grew to more than a billion dollars and involved nearly a dozen different federal agencies. Importantly, this new initiative provided expanded funding for investigator-initiated medical informatics research in areas such as telemedicine and electronic patient records. Dr. Lindbergh made sure that the national investment in advanced technologies for defense, aerospace, and the physical sciences was complemented by an investment in technologies for improving the nation's health to garner the resources for an expanded national agenda of research and development, Dr. Lindbergh has been a persuasive proponent of health informatics in the U.S. Congress, and the success of his efforts is reflected in a National Library of Medicine budget that has nearly quadrupled in size from $43 million in 1983 to $160 million annually. For many years, Dr. Lindbergh was the U.S. National Representative to EMEA, the International Medical Informatics Association. He was a central figure in the creation of the American Medical Informatics Association and was named its first president in 1991. Emerson wrote, The scholar is that man who must take up into himself all the ability of the time, all the contributions of the past, all the hopes of the future. But scholarship alone does not explain the outstanding achievements of a professional career spanning nearly 40 years. For sustained success, scholarship must be guided by other qualities. Those who know Don Lindbergh best reflect on the qualities that have made his career so rich with accomplishment. At Missouri, he's regularly, he's considered to be 30 years ahead of his time. And people who knew him when he was at Missouri still say that, that, that he, uh, what he was envisioning 30 years ago is just now taking place in terms of the use of computers in, in clinical care. Um, one thing that he did when he was there, which was just remarkable, was, was to build the first clinical laboratory system in the whole world, and did that because he saw it as a, a need to take care of patients better and, and uh, to distribute data to the folks who needed the data to take care of patients. And if you look now, it's just a common part of our life to go out and everybody in the entire world has a lab system. And he could vision that and create it, make it a reality um, as the first person in the world. And he can do that with other things as well. When, when he started talking about the UMLS, um, he could see how that was a rate-limiting step in how you handle clinical information and um, get started on the first steps and pull the people around him to make that a reality, even though he knew that that was going to be a, at, at least a 20-year quest. Perhaps his childhood, his upbringing, his Swedish heritage has, have had something to do with that. Um, he's very tolerant. He accepts people uh, as they are and for the qualities they have and has managed to surround himself with people of various talents and persuasions and